Right. The whole concept of the James Webb Space Telescope was to see the universe the way no one, no previous telescope had ever seen it. It's a new window into the history of our universe. And today we're gonna to get a glimpse of the first light to shine through that window. Light from other worlds, orbiting stars, far beyond our own. It's astounding to me when I read this. It's safe to say that the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, hasn't disappointed. The hype surrounding the largest telescope we've ever launched into space was big and decades long, but as the JWST images show, its view of the universe is simply groundbreaking. But clearly there's more to JWST than just beautiful images. This telescope is allowing us to peer into the origins of our universe, allowing us, yes, you and I, to see back in time and understand our place in the cosmos, giving us the best look we've ever had at the very origins of our universe. It seems completely otherworldly, and that's because, well, it literally is. And in an extraordinary discovery, James Webb has detected a structure that could shatter our understanding of the cosmos. Something is wrong. We may have to revise our theory of the creation of the universe. Join us today as we dig deep into James Webb's new discovery of a structure that shouldn't exist. The JWST was built on three decades of discoveries by the iconic Hubble Space Telescope. While JWST is sometimes called Hubble's replacement, NASA thinks of it as a successor. James Webb complements and extends Hubble's observations, becoming the world's newest premier space observatory. Besides looking farther across space than any other observatory before it, the JWST has another trick up its mirrors. It can look further back in time than any other telescope, observing distant stars and galaxies as they appeared around 13.5 billion years ago, not long after the beginning of the universe as we know it. But how is this possible? How can a machine look back in time? Well, let's analyze. When we look out into the universe, we see a variety of galaxy shapes, some with magnificent spiraling arms, others that appear to glow like giant light bulbs. These spiral and elliptical galaxies haven't always had these familiar shapes though. Galaxies in the early universe were probably small, unformed clumps. A big question in astronomy is how these early, modest groupings of stars evolved into the grand structures we see today. When astronomers use a telescope to look further away, they are also looking back in time. It sounds magical, doesn't it? But it's actually very simple. Light needs time to travel across the vast distances of space to reach us. Light waves move extremely fast, about 186,000 miles or 300,000 kilometers per second, and that's every second. Light moves so fast that as we go about our daily lives, it appears to travel instantaneously from one place to another. For example, it takes only a few billionths of a second for light to travel across a room once a lamp switch is turned on. However, in space, the distances are so immense that the time light takes to travel is noticeable. The Moon is Earth's closest companion at about 239,000 miles or 390,000 kilometers away, light takes around 1.3 seconds to travel the distance to Earth. When we look up at the sky, we see the Moon as it was 1.3 seconds earlier. Similarly, light from the planet Neptune takes about four hours to cross the solar system, so we say Neptune is four light hours away. Across our Milky Way galaxy, Distances are measured in terms of how many light years it takes light to travel. The nearest star is over four light years away. So, when we look at the nearest star, we see it not as it is today, but as it was four years ago. We are seeing the light that left that star four years previously and is just now reaching us. Galaxies are yet further away in both space and time. Our nearest large neighbor galaxy, Andromeda, 
is about two and a half million light years away. The Virgo cluster of galaxies is the largest nearby collection of galaxies at about 60 million light years from the Milky Way. The light we see today from galaxies in the Virgo cluster started on its path towards us at the same time as the age of the dinosaurs was ending on Earth. If you were in a Virgo cluster galaxy today, and you had a telescope powerful enough to study the Earth, you would be able to see the prehistoric reptiles. The most distant galaxies the Hubble Space Telescope has viewed are more than 13 billion light years away. That means the light Hubble captured left the galaxies over 13 billion years ago. But there's another complication. As the universe expands, light gets stretched into longer and longer wavelengths beyond the visible portion of the spectrum into the infrared. By the time visible light from extremely distant galaxies reaches us, it appears as infrared light. Hubble can detect some infrared light the wavelengths closest to the red end of the visible spectrum. The James Webb Space Telescope observes infrared wavelengths exclusively, seeing deeper into that portion of the spectrum than Hubble. Where Hubble sees young galaxies, Webb can show us newborns. Webb is engineered to observe the earliest stages of galaxy formation, and astronomers are hopeful it will allow them to study the formation of the very first galaxies. Webb could show us how small galaxies in the early universe merged to form larger galaxies. Finally, where Hubble only sees the brightest outliers from this ancient epoch, Webb is capable of revealing much more of the general population of stars and galaxies during that period. This expanded sample of early galaxies will give astronomers a better idea of how galaxies looked as they first came into being and helped them map the universe's overall structure. After more than two decades of labor at a cost of some $10 billion US, JWST finally launched on Christmas Day of 2021. The telescope reached its deep space destination just a month later, where it would endure exhaustive testing to ensure its optimal performance. By July of 2022, it was ready to begin its long-awaited first year of science observations, known as Cycle 1. Part of the telescope's early time was devoted to high-impact programs across a range of disciplines from which data would immediately be made public. Two of those, SEERS, the Cosmic Evolution Early Release Science Survey, and GLASS, the Grissom Lens Amplified Survey from Space, independently spent dozens of hours looking at galaxies in the early universe by starting at separate small portions of the sky. Not much was expected, perhaps a slightly more ornate version of the Hubble Deep Field, but nothing more. Steve Frankelstein of the University of Texas at Austin and lead on the Sears program says, extremely distant galaxies were predicted to pop up only after a few cycles of data from multiple programs. Instead, much to the surprise of astronomers, extremely distant galaxies came into view immediately. Hubble's record for the most distant known galaxy had been GNZ11, spotted in 2015 at a redshift of 11 thanks to a 2009 upgrade that enhanced the telescope's modest infrared capabilities. A redshift of 11 corresponds to a cosmic age of about 400 million years, at a point at the brink of when galaxy formation was thought to have begun. But from the very first glass data, Two teams, one led by Rohan Naidu in that breathless late-night discovery, independently found glass Z13 at a redshift of 13, some 70 million years farther back in time. In their quest for quick results, the researchers relied on redshift estimates derived from simple brightness-based measurements. These are easier to obtain, but less precise than direct measurements at redshift which require more direct observation time. Nevertheless, the simplified technique can be accurate, and here it suggested a galaxy that was unexpectedly bright and big, already bearing a mass of stars equivalent to a billion suns, just a few hundred times less than that of the Milky Way's stellar population, 
despite her own galaxy being billions of years more mature. This was beyond our most optimistic expectations, says Tommaso Treyu, an astronomer at the University of California, Los Angeles, and the lead on GLASS. However, the record didn't last long. In the following days, dozens of galaxy candidates from Sears and GLASS sprang into view with estimated redshifts as high as 20, just 180 million years after the Big Bang, some with disk-like structures that were not expected to manifest so early in the cosmic history. Another team, meanwhile, found evidence for galaxies the size of our Milky Way at a redshift of 10, less than 500 million years after the Big Bang. Such behemoths emerging so rapidly defies expectations set by cosmologists' standard model of the universe's evolution. Called Lambda CDM or LCDM, this model incorporates scientists' best estimates for the properties of dark energy and dark matter, which collectively act to dominate the emergence of large-scale cosmic structures. Lambda refers to dark energy and CDM refers to dark matter that is relatively sluggish or cold. According to the model, giant galaxies are formed from small, faint clouds that gradually coalesce through cosmic mergers. This process takes billions of years. But the galaxies captured by James Webb are so massive that they conflict with 99% of models that represent early galaxies. They appear, for example, to be very massive, very bright, very rich in heavy elements, very active forming new stars, and very rich in gas. The fact that we see so many galaxies with these properties so early on is simply puzzling because we believe we understand how gas, i.e. atom-based matter, infalls onto these early galaxies and how star formation feeds back and prevents future gas from falling in. There's a limit for how fast material can accrete onto these objects, and although certain physical conditions can lead to an object temporarily overcoming that limit, it shouldn't be sustainable over such long time scales. Therefore, when we look at these very early galaxies, we do get the impression that something is amiss. How could bright, fully formed galaxies exist at what in cosmological terms would be regarded as a mere moment after the universe came into being? It is like watching an adult emerge fully formed from childbirth. As Michael Boylan Colchin, a cosmologist at the University of Texas at Austin said, even if you took everything that was available to form stars and snapped your fingers instantaneously, you still wouldn't be able to get that big that early. It would be a real revolution, he said. In other words, despite all the breathless excitement it evokes, JWST has presented astronomers with an unsettling problem. If the masses and time since the Big Bang are confirmed for these galaxies, fundamental changes to the reigning model of cosmology, what's called the dark energy plus cold dark matter paradigm, could be needed. If there are other faster ways to form galaxies than the current model allows, or if more matter actually was available for forming stars and galaxies in the early universe than was previously understood, astronomers would need to shift their prevailing thinking. Regardless of the unimagined discoveries from Glass and Sears, one of the most interesting regions of space of all comes courtesy of the survey that gave us the current cosmic record holder for distance, a record that surely will be broken by the end of 2023, JADES. Standing for the JWST Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey, JADES, it combines a total of 770 hours of near-cam, MIRI, and near-spec imaging across a total area of 125 square arc minutes, just under one millionth, or 0.0001%, of the total night sky. But that region of sky included two of the most importantly imagined regions in all of history, the original Hubble Deep Field and the Hubble Ultra and Extreme Deep Fields. Within these regions of space, there had previously been a few ultra-distant galaxy candidates 
identified by Hubble. About 40 candidates arising from the first 650 million years of cosmic history, including about four from the first 500 million years. The problem is that these are only galaxy candidates. We identify galaxy candidates by looking at their light, but the only way to be certain that these galaxy candidates really are galaxies, or at the actual distances we think they're at, is to perform spectroscopy, to break their light up into all the different wavelengths that make it up, and to identify where certain specific features appear. It's only through spectroscopy that we can promote a galaxy candidate to the status of confirmed galaxy. The underlying science is as follows. When you imagine a galaxy using photometry, the standard way of gathering light over a set of wavelength ranges, you know how that light will be distributed depending on whether that galaxy is primarily composed of young stars, a mix of young and old stars, or primarily older stars. In the late time universe, all types of galaxies exist, but early on, we primarily expect galaxies to be made of young stars. Below a certain wavelength, the ultraviolet limit where electrons transition down to an atom's ground state, you know that no light will arrive, whereas at longer wavelengths, you should see plenty of light. That transitional point is key and is known as the Lyman break for galaxies, where the transition down to the n equals 1 state of hydrogen, if you remember the Lyman series, occurs. As the universe expands, the wavelength of that Lyman break stretches. Therefore, for JWST, if you see no light from the short wavelengths, but plenty of light from longer wavelengths, you have an excellent ultra-distant galaxy candidate. But, in order to make sure that this really is a galaxy, that it is closer, intrinsically red or intrinsically dusty, and that it really is at the redshift distance combination you think that it is, you have to perform a spectroscopic follow-up. Photometry is relatively easy to perform. You can perform it for thousands of objects all at once with the same set of observations. Spectroscopy, on the other hand, is expensive. You have to observe for much longer amounts of time per object to get the necessary amount of light to determine how much light at each different wavelength there is. The payoff, though, is tremendous, however. Instead of estimating key properties of your galaxy, like how far away it is, how much light it's stretched, and how strong its hydrogen, oxygen, and other elemental signatures are, you can measure them directly. That's what's so remarkable and powerful about JADES, and other surveys like it performed with JWST. You can view a large area of the sky with an instrument such as NIRCAM, obtaining photometric estimates for a galaxy's properties relatively easy. You can then pick out the most interesting objects that you've identified through photometry to perform spectroscopic follow-up observations on, using the NIRSPEC instrument, for example. We generally know how our universe, presently 13.8 billion years old, looks today. But those first few hundred million years, that first 5% or so of our cosmic history, remains the big question mark that we hope JWST can provide us with answers to. Well, Jade's just announced at the 242nd Annual American Astronomical Society meeting some of the most remarkable science we could have hoped for. First off, across their 125 square arc minutes of observing area, they identified a whopping 717 galaxy candidates from the first 5% of our cosmic history, an incredible improvement over the about 40 that Hubble had previously seen. In fact, of these 717 candidates that were photometrically identified, a whopping 93% of them had never been seen before, not by Hubble and not by any observatory, indicating to us that they've only been revealed because of the unprecedented capabilities of the JWST observatory. But the story gets even better. Of these 717 galaxy candidates, spectroscopic follow-up was performed on 42 of them. When the spectra came in, 
at an incredible 41 out of 42 were confirmed to be at or nearly at the redshift distance combination suggested by photometry. Even more remarkable was this. The one that wasn't confirmed turned out to actually be two objects right on top of one another, one close by and one much further away. When the light from the close by object, only about 11 billion light years away, was subtracted out, the 42nd object, the farther one, was right in line with the photometric data too. 42 spectra collected, 42 confirmed ultra-distant galaxies. It's hard to do better than that. And that's only getting started. The most distant galaxy confirmed spectroscopically is known as Jade's GS Z13-0, and its light comes to us from just 320 million light years after the start of the hot Big Bang. Within just the Jade's field of view, there are 17 additional galaxy candidates, all of which don't have spectra just yet, that have greater photometrically inferred distances than the current cosmic record holder. Not only that, but Cosmos Web, whose data is all still unreleased, and about 50% of which remains to be taken as of June 2023, will be surveying a much larger area of the sky than Jade's ever will. But, because of the combination effects of the unprecedented size and resolving power of JWST, we can learn a tremendous amount about the universe by looking at these galaxies. They're not simply points or smudges to JWST like they were to an observatory like Hubble. These massive galaxies reveal major bursts of star formation within them. The hot, massive stars that occur during these bursts are enormous contributors to the process of cosmic reionization, where the neutral atoms in the intergalactic medium become reionized thanks to ultraviolet photons. The emission lines within these galaxies are extremely strong. And finally, these galaxies come in an enormous variety of sizes, from only a few hundred of light years wide to tens of thousands of light years wide, demonstrating that many of the objects in our universe grew up quickly, perhaps more quickly than many astronomers expected. We've come far enough to put together the broad strokes of how our universe grew up, and it's looking like a story that will lead to decades of additional research to robustly put all the pieces together. The very first stars must have formed long before JWST is observing, likely within a time period of just 100 to 200 million years after the Big Bang. The earliest galaxies that we see are likely the brightest and most massive ones from their time, and they exist in great numbers too, up to 500 million years after the Big Bang, and quite abundantly even 300 to 400 million years after the Big Bang. Many galaxy candidates exist from when the universe was only 250 to 300 million years old, and there's every reason to hope that many of them will truly turn out to be confirmed galaxies once all is said and done. And that the technique of photometric redshifts is remarkably successful for the galaxies it's been applied to so far. Whether it still works for the most distant galaxy candidates of all still remains to be tested, however. All of this JWST science that we're incorporating into our set of knowledge is, for all of it, less than a full calendar year old. As more data continues to pour in from the telescope, and as different teams using different observational schemes publish their results, we'll learn how to use JWST even more efficiently and effectively. It's that glorious case where, whenever we learn something new, the whole community benefits. With an expected time life that will take it well into the 2040s, we have decades of new science, new discoveries, and a new understanding of how the universe grew up to look forward to with great optimism. That's all the information we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to tell us just what you think about today's content. 
Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content like this and to always improve. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.